In this video, I'm gonna share with you the seven most common reasons that people don't buy from you and the steps you can take to overcome their objections quickly, easily, and without needing to be pushy or sleazy or salesy. I call these objections the seven deadly sales killers because it doesn't matter what you sell or who you sell to, every single person out there has had at least one of these objections at some point in time. And usually it's more than just one. Now in a perfect world, you'd be able to overcome these objections in advance by making sure that your marketing was on point and that you hit already addressed and handled all of the possible reasons that someone would have for not wanting to buy from you through your marketing materials and your content, providing your prospect with better, more accurate, and more valuable information about how buying from you really is the best decision for them. In fact, one of the things that drew me to marketing in the first place was the promise of being able to make sales without any of the uncomfortable selling part. In other words, allowing my marketing and my content to do the heavy lifting for me ahead of time by influencing and persuading and overcoming any possible objections in advance. That way, when it came time to talk and do the actual sales call, the client was already pretty much pre-sold and I was really just there as a glorified order taker. But you don't always have that luxury and sometimes an objection can catch you off guard. But the worst mistake that you can make in your sales or your marketing is assuming that your customers don't have any objections at all. Because they do. A lot of them. A full mixed bag of objections and questions and concerns. But most people keep these thoughts to themselves, smiling, nodding along, and pretending that they agree with everything that you're saying until the time finally comes to pay and it feels like you just run into a brick wall. The problem with this is that you never really know why they didn't buy and what you could have done differently. Clearly, this is dangerous and very bad for business. So I've identified the seven most common buying objections and I'll walk you through them now so you'll never get caught off guard again. Starting with objection number one, separate. The first objection is where your prospects don't think that what you're selling is for them. They feel separate from it and detached from both the product or service and the result that you're promising. The most common thing you'll hear in this situation is, I'm not interested. The solution here is to show them that it is in fact for them by calling out their pain or problem and identifying them by one of their customer avatar criteria, like age or gender or title or occupation or anything else you can do to get them to pay attention. In other words, being specific about both the pain that your offer solves as well as the type of person it's best for. In marketing, we call this a dog whistle and it's a powerful signal to get your ideal customers to pay attention. The next objection is the special objection. The special objection is where your prospect believes one of two different things. First, that you, the person selling something and the person making all of the promises to them, well, that you're special, unique, amazing, one in a million. And therefore, whatever it is that you're selling, well, just because it worked for you, doesn't mean it's gonna work for them. And the second part of this is that the prospect that you're selling to believes that they're cursed or doomed just unlucky. And even though what you're selling has worked for others, it's not gonna work for them. The most common thing you'll hear in this scenario is, I don't think it'll work for me. The solution to this is to show them that there's nothing special about you and there's nothing special about all of the other people that this has worked for. Everyone that succeeded and everybody that achieved the result that they're hoping for was normal, just like them, and they can have it too. All right, the next objection is the complete opposite to special, and that is the scam objection. The scam objection is where your prospect simply doesn't trust you yet. And with the average customer seeing somewhere between five and 10,000 different marketing messages every single day, most of them having been burned before, well, they're more cynical and more jaded and more skeptical than ever before. And it's hard to blame them. Now, most people won't say this directly, that the reason that I'm not buying from you is because I don't trust you. So you're gonna have to look for other cues like being disinterested or overly guarded. Full disclosure, this is a tough one to overcome. And I'd even go so far as to say that if you end up on a sales call with someone that doesn't trust you, then something went very wrong ahead of time. And I'm not really sure why they'd be there talking to you at all. That said, the solution or antidote to this objection is to give them reason to trust you. First off, by obviously being a trustworthy person, but also by showing proof and case studies and reviews and testimonials, and possibly even reducing the risk further with guarantees or other risk reversals. There's also a powerful psychological phenomenon that you can leverage in your favor called the mere exposure effect. This is where your customers and your clients and your potential prospects will start to trust you more simply by the fact of you showing up more often in front of them. After all, we as humans have been conditioned to associate frequency with trust. So the secret here is to really just create more content. Okay, moving on to the next objection, the swamped objection. The swamped objection is where your customer feels they have no time. They're busy, 
swamped actually, and the last thing they need is another XYZ or whatever it is that you're selling. The most common thing you'll hear in this scenario is, I'm too busy or now's not a good time. But as you and I both know, there's never a perfect time and it's unlikely that our lives are gonna be getting any less busy in the future. So the solution here is to make the case for why now is the best time to do this and to show them how what you're offering is fast and easy and will make their lives significantly better. Better not just in the long run, but starting as early as today or whenever is realistic. In fact, doing nothing is actually making things worse, so they should get started sooner rather than later. Okay, the next objection is stagnation. Stagnation is where a customer or a prospect stalls and simply stops moving forward through the buying process. Now this can be for any number of reasons, including all of the objections that I've just covered, but they may also have just gotten distracted. The most common thing you'll hear in this scenario is, let me get back to you, or, they may just completely ghost you. The solution here is to keep them moving through the process by doing everything you can to eliminate friction and choke points and anything else that may get in the way. For example, if your sales or checkout process is three steps, well, can you get it down to two? Or could you flip the order of things around by making things either easier or harder at different stages? For example, if somebody has to fill out an application prior to booking a sales call, well, what would happen if you flip that order around and you encourage them to book the sales call first before presenting them with the application form after. There really is no one size fits all perfect approach to designing the ultimate marketing and sales funnel. However, there are always things that you can do to further optimize the experience and eliminate those choke points and points of friction. Okay, next. Let's talk about money and the savings objection. The savings objection is the stereotypical and most common sales objection of all time. The most common things you'll hear in this scenario is it's too expensive or I don't have the money or I can't afford it or any variation like that. For this objection, I feel it's important to break it down into two different parts. First, too expensive. The solution to this objection is to make sure that you've properly differentiated your offer so they aren't directly comparing it to something else. Also, make sure to show its value by highlighting the pain and the problem it solves and showcasing everything that they're going to be receiving. Next, the I don't have the money. The I don't have the money objection could simply be that they don't see the value in what you're offering. After all, it's shocking how many people don't have the money for a gym membership or healthy food or educational materials, yet always seem to find a way for entertainment expenses like TVs or dinners out or vacations or drinks with friends or anything like that. On the other hand, they may not have the money, in which case your offer or your targeting are off and you need to take a look at who you're going after and whether or not they're the best fit for your business. Okay, next, safety. The safety objection occurs when your customer or prospect feels fine with where they're at right now. In other words, the thought of change, even a small change, is significantly more painful than the thought of just doing nothing and staying where they are. The most common thing you'll hear in this scenario is, I'm good, thanks. The solution here is to create content that's similar to that that you would use to overcome the swamped objection, essentially showing that now really is the best time to take action. But also don't be afraid to leverage the more emotional side of things by showing them all of the things that will happen if they don't take action. Because let's be honest, not taking action is actually taking some kind of action. That's some pretty deep stuff, isn't it? And the action of not taking action is unlikely to lead them where they ultimately wanna go. After all, if doing nothing was getting them the results that they wanted, well, they wouldn't be talking to you in the first place. Now, of course, the best thing that you can do to handle this objection as well as all of the others is to overcome them in advance with a solid marketing strategy. So to help you do that, I've linked up a video right here with seven of my most effective marketing strategies. So make sure to check it out now and I'll see you in the next video. And everybody just ignores you and you sound like 99% of the other businesses and marketers out there saying the same things. Like we offer higher quality and we offer better service and all of that stuff that everybody's heard a million times before and they're completely blind and deaf to. 